right off of my porch, can't help but see it every day, is this big pile of lava rocks that has just been sitting here for goodness knows how long. It's covered with leaves. Little oak trees are growing up through it. It's just a mess. And then we piled some uh, chipped up pieces of regular stepping stones over here that were on the property. None of these are whole pieces. It's just all chipped pieces, but I'm still trying to use everything the best I can. I took some of these chipped pieces the other day and I put them in this new bed that I built in the front of my house because, as I told you on that video, I'm going to have some shell beans right here some that can go to dried beans. On the back is artichokes and cucumbers. And then I've put some gray zucchinis and then some squashes here and there. And sometimes you just need a little leverage if you have to get in there and cut something, like get in there and cut a zucchini off or pick a zucchini. And you need a little bit of leverage. I don't want to be stepping in my beds all the time. So I thought, well, these little pieces of chunks will do fine for that. Once plants grow up, you really won't see these too much, but they'll give me a little footing if I need to get in the beds and pick something. So that's what I'm doing with all these rocks today is I was trying to think of the best use of them. And I'm not sure that I'm doing the best use of them, but I'm going to do something maybe pretty with them. <laughs> they don't look like much right now, but I think they're unique. They've sat here so long that they're kind of covering with uh, kind of a, a mossy little mold on them or whatever. I'm not sure what that's called. Fungus, I guess you would say. And I think that just gives them character. And also, I just want to kind of clear them out from here because it's just right by my driveway. And I just don't want them sitting here in this big ugly pile right here where I can see them every day. So, what I'm doing is I've got my dolly and my shovel. I'm getting some leverage under them with my shovel. And then I'm sliding my dolly up under there. Well, I've done it with one rock <laughs> and it worked. So I'm hoping those big ones will be cooperative. But I'm putting it over here. I have this sugar kettle right here. And then I had put some wood chips and all in this corner to kind of control water for one thing, but also because this just was ugly. This dirt looked like that because it used to be kind of, I guess they used to pull up in this way on this driveway. And so there was hardly any grass and the dirt was just ugly. And so I put the wood chips and I'm gonna add some more wood chips cause little grass is coming up between things here and there. This right here is a, um, a bulbing. I'm not sure what yet, it hasn't <laughs> bloomed or anything, but it's some type of bulbing plant. That's what that is. But down here and stuff, there's some grass coming up. So I'm gonna add more wood chips, make it look a little more bulky. And then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these lava rocks and just kind of follow along this little path here along the wood chips and make a little arced row. I think when you drive up, it'll make this look more like a curated flower bed, even though it's really nothing planted in it. Uh, I may plant something, but really not too worried about it. I walk through there a lot. I walk through there and I'm gonna continue to walk through there. <laughs> so I kind of don't want to plant it up with a whole bunch of stuff. I have my tomatoes here with the honeydew melons. And I forgot to mention on my video that in the front of this bed, I planted some seeds for some white wonder cucumbers. So those cucumbers are gonna be kind of tumbling out into this. So I don't wanna um, obstruct being able to walk in there by having other things planted. I actually did the same thing here. I planted the Blue Lake stringless beans along the back of the bed, but along the front of the bed, I planted some Sumter pickling cucumbers. They're not supposed to have very long vines, but um, you know, they put off pickling cucumbers and I feel like they're gonna grow fine. So that'll be tumbling out this way down here, which really isn't affected by that bed, but just to mention it down here, I put some double yield cucumber seeds along the front of that. So those will be kind of tumbling out this way. So I'll have a lot going on without really planting this a whole lot. Though if I do plant it, I may just end up putting a lot of bulb type plants in here. May not end up enjoying them till next year, but um, with these stumps and, and different things, I may just put a lot of bulbing plants in here, kind of towards the middle and make it look like that. But for right now, I'm getting these lava rocks and I'm just gonna put them along this edge. I took my shovel and I scraped the grass off there so that they can at least start without a bunch of grass under them. 
then the grass can grow back towards them that's okay but for right now i just wanted to start with a clean slate this may seem like a simple project but it's knocking out two birds with one stone it's giving me a little decorative element here a little separation between these ugly rocks and dirt and this wood chip pile which isn't anything spectacular so it's giving me a little definition there and it's also clearing up that pile which like i said i see every time i walk out my front door it's like pile of rocks <laughs> pile of rocks what you gonna do with those rocks laney oh i don't know i'll get them later well today's later today is later today's the day i'm gonna deal with it so i'm gonna do this today and i will let you know how it looks at the end and hopefully nothing will bite me hopefully there's no snakes under there i'm praying for the best with that but uh, i'm gonna move forward because i gotta get it done well the rock pile is gone I don't have to look at a rock pile when I walk out my door anymore. And I made a new area over here. I made a new area and I really, really like it. There were some big rocks in there. I didn't even realize how big they were. That middle one has ferns growing all over it and I just left it there. I think the ferns look cool. I had enough rocks to pretty much cover everything I needed to cover. I left a little gap at the end by my kettle and I left a little gap down there so that I can get my wheelbarrow up in there if I need to put any more wood chips or do anything. So that's an entrance. And I just love it. I think it came out wonderful. I added some more wood chips to the pile and I even took some of those red chipped pavers that I had over there and I put three of them right there that way when I need to get in and cut a cucumber or something like that I have a little footing all these little steps help that way you're not just always walking through your your dirt or your wood chips and messing them up so what do y'all think what do y'all think give a little different view of it right here I think it looks really pretty when you come around this side of my carport and you're looking up the ramp and everything I think I achieved my goals. My goals were to make a barrier there to kind of help with water runoff, to give some distinction between those wood chips and that <laughs> not so attractive dirt ground there with the little stubby grass in it. Uh, so that was my objective. And my third objective was of course, just to clean up that pile over there, to clean up that pile. The rest of the pavers, I just put on my concrete pile by my fence over there, and I'll use them as I need them for different things around the yard. I'm going to milk these azaleas for all they're worth <laughs> because they've already started kind of falling off. We had a storm come through the other night, and it knocked a lot of the azaleas off, and then we have another storm line coming through Friday, and the last of them might get knocked off. Who knows? I mean, you never can tell. They don't last that long anyway, so I'm just going to kind of milk them and enjoy them while I can. <laughs> Sometimes things can just be very, very one dimensional. You have a rock pile, you need to move it. You do it, it's done, it's over with. But sometimes my mind just doesn't think in things that way. My mind, first of all, I wonder, well, why did you put off moving them for so long? And, and then when you decided to move them, why today? Why all of a sudden today did this whole project get done? You could have done this a long time ago. <laughs> Because when it all comes down to it, sometimes a project doesn't take, but maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Some projects take 20 minutes, but we put them off for different reasons. We just don't want to deal with them. We think they're harder than they are, and they're not really, but we think they are. So we put off doing things about whatever it is. Uh, I'm just as guilty of that as everybody. I have to be ready and in a mood sometimes to tackle some things. And that's, uh, that's what happened today. <laughs> this was not that bad. It's an overcast day. It's kind of cool. I didn't even sweat. But I got it done. I got it done. And I got a whole lot more sweeping and raking and picking up and moving of water hoses. I did a lot of things. But I still really only took a couple hours to get it all done. So I'm proud of myself. <laughs> this might be a little odd. But there's been so much going on this last week. Uh, since last Friday when that first bank failed, the first big bank failure. And that's all I'm hearing about on every channel that I watch. And I get that. A lot of channels I watch are very much current event oriented. 
Um, and that's a good thing because a lot of times uh, those channels, I get more information off of them than I would on watching any type of TV news or anything. But as I took in the news and kind of the gravity of everything just started kind of hitting me, I wasn't scared. Uh, I really wasn't. I've kind of known all this was coming for a long, long time. I try to have good sources in my life for information and I check those sources against other sources and when after a while some of your sources continually turn out to be very prophetic and right and they're good godly people that are not out there for clickbait or scare tactics I kind of rely on those sources and those sources have helped guide me through some years now and when things like this start happening, I am not surprised. I've been looking for it. I've been waiting for it and I've been planning for it. I don't get on here to always talk about specific details like that. That's not my thing to um, get on here and talk about finances all the time or to talk about current events all the time. <laughs> I just, I don't talk about a lot of specific current events all the time. I have in the past and I will in the future and I might reference things every now and then, but the content of most of my videos doesn't deal with it. However, I have a real life going on in the background and I'm very in tune to current events. I just wanna say that every decision I've made in the last two years, especially since I've had to take over making all the decisions for our life but even going back before that three or four years before that when I started I guess you would say prepping was because of knowing information like this that knowing that things were not going well knowing that we no longer can trust what we're being told it's like a big light bulb here I am in my 50s, and it's like a big light bulb had went off a few years ago. And once that light bulb goes off and you understand how our entire lives, I'm talking about our entire lives, have been a facade of manipulation, of propaganda, of lies, you don't go backwards. You don't go backwards and you don't trust anymore. Not the people that are lying to you. Not the people that have propagandized you. Not the people who have done everything, everything under the sun to stay in power. You don't go back to trusting those people anymore. And sadly, that's where we're at. Some financial people that I listen to, I like listening to Lynette Zhang. I like listening to a lot. I just can't even think of all the names right now. Uh, Peter Schiff, a lot of different people have said for years now that this shell game that our government put, plays upon us by printing money that we don't have, putting the debt on our children's 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 children, <laughs> children that haven't even been thought of or born yet now have debt on their shoulders to pay off slave debt on their shoulders and it's done with impunity with no one caring about the outcome with no one showing any type of wisdom and what they have said is this shell game will continue until people lose complete confidence in our government and then the game is up the game's up well, I can tell you, and I can only speak for myself, that time has passed for me. That time has passed. They always say about certain people, you know, you've heard this said in the past, I guess is what I'm saying, that if their lips are moving, they're lying. I think that every time I see someone on TV, go up to a microphone and move your lips and lie to us, lie to us. It has become such commonplace for people to be requested, subpoenaed or asked or however it works to appear before Congress and 
They sit and lie. Why not? Why not? <laughs> because the congressmen are taking everything that you say and using it for all, their own purposes and their own agendas. Those same congressmen lie. Senators lie. They get up in front of microphones every day of the week and lie. And it's all, <laughs> it's all theatrics. It's all just theatrics now. Protectionism, protecting business interests, protecting money, selling us out, selling our children out, selling our grandchildren and children we haven't even thought about being born yet, selling them out for some type of gain today for your child to go to a better college than you could maybe afford to send them to for trips for trips we're being sold out for trips <laughs> for cars for access you want access to me you do this you do that it doesn't even make any sense anymore I was thinking last night, and I, I, when I said my prayers before bed, I said, Dear Lord, you know, we're talking about the seven deadly sins. It really does boil down to simple things like that. There's all types of sins, but the problems in our world right now really just boil down to those simple things. Greed and lust and just envy, wanting power, just wanting power. And what does that have to do with my rocks in my flower bed? Well, this is just a simple project today. But what it did for me is it diverts my mind from focusing on the poison and the propaganda and the lies. I can just take my mind off of all that for a while. I just say no. I don't even want to hear the lies that you're lying about, that you can't remember what you lied about the first time you were on TV, so you're lying about something else now. Um, didn't Sunday morning something happen, and by Sunday night a whole different story was going on? Lies. Just lies. All day lies. From both sides, from every side. Do you think we're actually gonna know the story behind this bank? Do you think we're actually gonna know which depositors got bailed out and which depositors took it on the hoof? No, we'll never know any of that. We won't. Why this bank? Why now? Well, because their depositors did a run on the bank and took out a bunch of money and it caused them to crash. Well, why did those depositors do that? How did they all know they needed to go get their money out? How come people like that can know they need to go get their money out, but you and I aren't told anything? There's a lot going on that we'll never know. We cannot know. When I guess you don't run around with the flea-infested dog pack that a lot of people run around with, you're completely out of the loop with all that kind of stuff. You're just completely out of the loop. I'm completely out of the loop. I no longer think I can just read and inform myself and know what's going on. Just about everything about a story is either a lie or it's unsearchable because documents can't be FOIA'd. Uh, it's all hidden behind curtains that I have no access to go open and you don't either. And so, I have to just do what I can to take back a little bit of control in my world. Just a little bit of control. Just a tiny bit. And today, I moved mountains. <laughs> Those were big, heavy rocks. Did I pick them up? No. Did I figure out how to move them, though? I did. I figured out how to move them. I took a little bit of Laney's world and I moved it from one side of the property to the other, and I took it from being something ugly, and I made it into something very pretty, in my eyes, very pretty. I took it from being just a waste pile and made it into something pretty and made it into something useful. 
and it's a good day. It's a good day. And guess what? The whole time I was doing it, I wasn't thinking about any of those people. I've done all I can do to protect myself from being fleeced <laughs> by those that just continue and continue and continue to lie to us. I've done all I can. I've done all I can to make sure that the money my husband accumulated working all those years in his 401k is protected. It's not with his 401k company anymore. I privately prayed about it for many, many months after his stroke. Feeling the responsibility on my shoulders of having to make the decisions about that money. And I have now, and I'm happy and I'm at peace. I've paid off debt. I've got it to the point now, finally, with the exception of my son's school, that would be bad if we quit paying that because he would have to stop going to school or he would have to work uh, a lot harder to kind of pay it for himself. But aside from that, just say the world ended tomorrow, all the banks shut down, can't use our debit card, whatever. I finally got us to the point where I could just shut everything off. Don't pay homeowner's insurance. Don't pay health insurance. <laughs> Cut off the TV. Cut off the electricity. Cut off the water. I don't want to do things like that. I'm just saying I finally got us to the point where we have no debt and we have no one that would come knocking on our door to take our stuff. And if Social Security ended tomorrow, <laughs> if his disability ended tomorrow, if the world just went kaput tomorrow financially, at least we don't have things that can come get repossessed. We would not be kicked out on the street and be homeless. And I, that's a good thing for us, but also to me, it provides an island of protection for my family and extended family or anyone that I need to help out that could come stay here should their house be in danger or taken. And that's a shame that we have to think about all this when we live in the greatest country, I believe, ever that has existed on the face of the earth. And the people that built our country from all nations across the world that migrated here, my own family came from England and came here in the 1600s through North Carolina and into Louisiana. We haven't had a big trail. Our trail pretty much ended right in this area in Louisiana. And here I am today in that same area. And but people coming from everywhere that built our country and that believed in this country and that have lived good, good lives and they're everywhere. They're everywhere. I see y'all, I see you. I, I hear your comments on my videos. I see you on other videos. I watch how good you are. I see people in this town that I live uh, in and they're good people, they're hardworking people. And we get up every day and we think that if we live right and we do things right, that things should go a certain way. And we're right to think that. What has happened though is corruption and greed and all of those sins I mentioned, all of those sins that have made it next to impossible for our government to function anymore because it is so, so bad. All of those things have interrupted <laughs> the dreams, the dreams that we had for our kids, for our grandkids. And so rather than sit around and mull about it and cry about it, um, I don't wanna sit around and talk about it even in front of my grandchildren because I don't wanna take their hope. I wanna give hope and moving a pile of rocks today was just one little way of bucking the system for me of just saying i'm going to control this little part of the world and i'm going to take it and make it as beautiful as i can and make it in an oasis we have started having so much company come by and people come over and i love it and i think they love us but i think also this place makes them feel at home I think this, this hilltop home place makes them feel at home. And I want people to come by and I want, I want my grandkids to always remember this place 
as being a peaceful little oasis that my mom and papa created and that they could come to. And this is our place and I have control of it. And this government, the people, their greed, they have no place here. They have no place here. This is my house. This is my oasis. This is, I worked this hard so that in a little while, I told my husband, I said, when, when you come outside in a minute, because we've got to take a ride somewhere. I said, when you come out, I said, I think you're going to like the little thing I did out here. He, does, he hasn't seen it yet. But I do all this for him. I do it for our children, our grandchildren to have a place they can be proud of. But I also do it as my own little rebel way of just saying, I will continue on to make things beautiful. I will continue on working hard. I will continue on exiting the system as much as I can so that I'm not as controlled as they want us to be, even though there's certain things you almost can't disengage from. But we can fight it. We can fight it in our own ways and we can fight it with a smile on our face. I think our government needs to repent. Our government needs to come back to its roots and if things don't change we've got to be the change we've got to be the change we've got to take the heap <laughs> that looks that is a undesirable heap and we've got to turn it into something good I know this kind of might be a long way of looking at a simple little chore like moving rocks but what's going on in the background of life right now is a lot of things trying to distract us from what is beautiful. And I want us to focus on what is beautiful. Focus on what is good. Focus on the people that mean a lot to you, the people that love you. Focus on the people that depend on you. And let's, um, let's all work to get our country straightened out. Let's all work to get it straightened out. Let's do the best we can. And sometimes the best you can do on a given day, when there's nothing you can do about a bank in California, is you can just take your own place and work hard. Get out here and work hard. These rocks aren't going to grow me any food, but they sure are making me want to be outside growing my food. If I make my place look beautiful, and if I want to be here, and if it's just a place I want to be outside and I want to be around, then it's going to be easy to grow food. It's not a laborious chore. It's going to be easy, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to enjoy it. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. A little deep. Sorry about that. But my mind goes different directions. I hope that you're not all stressed out about all this banking stuff. Believe me, there's nothing you can do about it. Always have a little cash on hand. Always. Be diversified in a lot of different ways. Not just cash out of the bank and that's it. Be diversified in a lot of different ways. Have your preps. Have your water. Have food. Be growing food. Be sourcing places you can get things. You know the drill. You know the drill. You're listening to the same stuff I am. You're watching the same videos. You're hearing the same things and you're observing this same crazy world that is making all of that sound very very practical and good advice thank you so much for watching me today y'all have a great day and um this may not have sounded like the most hopeful video but I, I do have hope i do have hope because i have hope in people just good people everywhere thank you so much bye bye